So good morning, everyone. As Andrea mentioned, my name is Leila Salazar Lopez. I'm Chicana, Latina, from Southern California. I'm a mother and a defender of Mother Earth and the Amazon. And I'm executive director of Amazon Watch. First, I'd like to thank ICERS and the people of Catalonia for hosting us in this beautiful city of Girona. Thank you so much. And thank you, ICERS, for opening up the indigenous space, which has been so important for us to be able to share and learn directly from indigenous peoples of the Amazon. So I was asked to share the work of Amazon Watch with the global ayahuasca community with a talk entitled Toward a More Connected and Sustainable Life. After being here for a few days, I've updated and edited the title of my talk, I hope you all are okay with that, um, to Sacred Activism, Taking Action for the Amazon Rights and the Climate to Restore the Balance of Mother Earth. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about Amazon Watch and our work. We were founded in 1996, and we work to protect the Amazon rainforest and indigenous people's rights. We work to advance the rights of indigenous people by supporting them in defense of their rights and ancestral territory from unwanted threats and destruction. We partner with indigenous organizations and environmental organizations throughout the Amazon and around the world with global movements in campaigns for human rights, corporate accountability, and the preservation of the Amazon's ecological systems. We strategically focus on stopping Amazon destruction because we know that already 20% of the Amazon has been deforested and another 20% has been degraded. Um, some of our climate scientist friends say that at 50%, the Amazon could reach its tipping point where it can no longer function as an ecological system. So we're working to prevent that. We're working to stop any further destruction. We're working to advance indigenous-led solutions, and we're working to support climate justice. So many of you have been to the Amazon. You've flown over beautiful forests and rivers like this and you've seen many beautiful creeks and forests like this. This is the Amazon, the world's largest and most biologically diverse tropical rainforest. It is a global treasure. It's, it covers 40% of South America, an area larger than the continental United States. It houses a third of the plant and animal species on Earth and produces 20% of the flowing fresh water on Earth. It's widely known as the lungs of the Earth because it produces 20% of our oxygen. Everybody take a deep breath. You could thank the Amazon for that. It's a vast carbon sink as well. It absorbs more than one billion tons of atmospheric carbon that is emitted from burning fossil fuels annually. The Amazon is also the heart of the Earth because of its role in regulating regional, continental, and global climates, ocean currents, and weather systems all over the world. This is why protecting the Amazon is essential for protecting the climate, or at least slowing and mitigating and or mitigating the climate chaos that we're living in. For thousands of years, the Amazon has been home to at least 400 distinct indigenous peoples from eight different South American countries whose lives are intrinsically connected to the land, the water, and the spirits for daily and cultural survival. This connection is what protects, what protects the rich biodiversity of life and our global climate for all life and all future generations. According to the UN, in many different studies, 
Indigenous peoples make up at least 4% of the global population. Their lands, their indigenous territories make up 20% of the land on earth. But within that land, 80% of the biodiversity is held. So they're doing something right. Many things right. I first traveled to the Amazon in the summer of 1995 to study tropical ecology and document medicinal plants at the Hatun Sacha Biological Station in the Ecuadorian Amazon. And it was my introduction to reforestation, plant medicine, indigenous knowledge, community-based ecotourism, and international corporate accountability. Studies have demonstrated that there are 250 different species of trees in one hectare of land in the Amazon. Close to 1,500 species of plants in that same area, in two and a half acres, one hectare. And in that same area of land, this is actually a study that was done in Hatun Sacha, in the, in the station that I worked in, just in one area, um, 17 new species were found within the reserve. And together with other volunteers, we planted hundreds of trees to create buffer zones next to cattle pastures. I also doc documented medicinal plants in the botanical garden and spent countless hours walking through the forest in amazement with indigenous guides who share their ancestral knowledge, their spiritual knowledge of the healing properties of plants in the Amazon including sangre de drago, or dragon's blood, uña de gato, or cat's claw, and ayahuasca. I left Hatun Sacha with the dream of one day becoming an ethnobotanist. Then, on my way home, I traveled um, back to Quito. On my way back to Quito, I saw a massive oil spill flowing out of the Trans-Ecuadorian pipeline into the Papayacta River, which is the main water source for the city of Quito. And I was angry, and I wondered, who did this? Who's responsible for this? What can we do? And I found out that it was a government's pipeline, but it was constructed decades earlier by Texaco, which is now Chevron Oil Company, based in California, where I live. And that's when I became an activist. An advocate, a passionate advocate, I would say, for the Amazon and its peoples. And that's when I really realized that the protection of the forest was intrinsically connected to the defense and the protection of indigenous peoples' rights and their territories. So as you may have heard throughout this weekend, throughout this conference, we need to protect our climate. And protecting the Amazon is essential for protecting the climate. And there's many different ways we can protect the Amazon. We focus on supporting and standing with and defending indigenous people's rights and territories because we believe that that is the, the best way to leave the forest standing and protect biodiversity and protect our climate. And this is, this is not just a belief in our theory of change, but this is confirmed by countless studies and science and by thousands of years of indigenous peoples protecting their territory. Those are the breast protected areas in the entire Amazon. So, speaking of the Amazon, the most biodiverse part of the Amazon is in the tropical Andes, in an area that we are calling, that we call the sacred headwaters. The area between the Napo up north and the Marañón rivers in Ecuador and Peru and everything in between. Many of you have, might have heard of the Yasuni National Park and it's kind of in the center of this. And any, everything around it is just as biodiverse. And we are working on an initiative called the Sacred Headwaters Initiative, together with many um, partner NGOs and indigenous 
nationalities and organizations throughout this region to permanently protect 60 million acres of rainforest in indigenous territories and keep them free from industrial resource extraction permanently. And that would, by doing so, we would keep six billion barrels of heavy Amazon crude in the ground. And this is essential, not only is it essential, but it's, it's necessary and it's possible. Climate scientists have warned us that we must leave 80% of fossil fuels in the ground to avoid climate chaos. We're already in climate chaos. We used to talk about it in the future, that we need to do this in the future. Well, now we need to do it now. And so this is one of the solutions, is permanently protecting the most biodiverse part of the Amazon. And we need to protect the entire Amazon. But one of our focus areas is here in the Western Amazon. This is what the, this area of the sacred headwaters looks like on a map to the oil companies and the mining companies and the governments. All of those blocks that you see are oil blocks, and they're overlapping with the most biodiverse place on the planet. They're overlapping with indigenous people's territories. All of those, the different colors, are the indigenous people's territories. The Achuar, the Anduas, the Quichua, the Shiwiar, the Shuar, Waurani, Sapara, and also the lands of the uncontacted peoples that live within the Yasuni National Park. So we work really closely with our partners, including the Sapara, Manari, who's here, to leave oil in the ground and protect the territories and protect the cultures and the ancient wisdom. You may have heard from Manari here. And you may have heard his, his explanation of all of the land that they're working to protect over 200,000 hectares of land that the Zapata have been protecting, less than 500 people have been protecting over 200,000 hectares of land. And that's just one example. If we don't, we'll see more of this. This is a daily occurrence in the northern Ecuadorian Amazon where oil development has been taking place for over 50 years. This is where Texaco drilled and dumped. This is where they set up the infrastructure for other oil companies to follow. We're working to stop this and promote and protect the rainforest forever. And we work with other communities emblematic communities that have won cases against the government and kept oil companies and the military off their land, such as Sarayaku, the Quechua people in the southern Ecuadorian Amazon. And not only are they keeping fossil fuels out of, the, um, keeping fossil fuels in the ground and out of their territories to protect their living forests, they have, they have proposals, their own indigenous-led proposals to advanced protection of the living forest, which they call Kausak Sacha. Kausak Sacha is a living forest, which basically is a recognition that the forest is alive. The trees, the lakes, the rivers, the mountains, the waterfalls, and the sacred beings that we cannot see with our own eye, but that are there. And so we work with Sarayaku, we work with many different communities throughout the Amazon. And now, in particular, we're working with women. Because women recently have been on the front lines, facing the threats. All of the people face the threats. But as the women say there, we're the ones who give birth. We're the ones who plant the yucca. We're the ones who plant the crops. We cannot 
feed our children. We cannot plant our crops if our land and forest is contaminated. And by standing up to this, these threats, by standing up to the resource extraction, either being oil or mining, they face lots of threats. And they faced death threats. And as a result of these threats, both to individuals and to collective territory and into all nations, they have joined together and they've united indigenous women and formed a, an informal um, collective called the Women Defenders of the Amazon Against Extraction. And every day they inspire me. And so I wanted to make sure we share their voice here as they're not here with us today. But they, like many people throughout the Amazon, are facing many threats and we're working with them to make sure that their voices are heard and that their declaration, which they took all the way to the Ecuadorian president, is implemented. Now I'm gonna switch countries and turn to Brazil. This is what agribusiness looks like in Brazil. And 90% of the deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon is caused by agribusiness. So, in especially now with the new threat of the Bolsonaro government, basically handing the Amazon to the agribusiness industries, the lobby, the, in, the agribusiness industries, it's a huge challenge, but we're mobilizing. We're standing with the indigenous movement in Brazil, in the Amazon and throughout Brazil called APB. It's the national Association of the Indigenous Peoples of Brazil. And Sonia Wajajada, the national coordinator, says, just in the first 100 days, the Bolsonaro government has reversed 30 years of progress for indigenous rights and territories. Everything that we've been trying to protect, everything that has been constructed, is being dismantled by this government. It's being handed to the pro-farming, pro-mining, pro-timber, and agricultural ministry. And actually, in the very first day of office, President Bolsonaro merged the agriculture and environmental ministry, basically allowing the fox to, to guard the hen house. So there are ma many massive threats being faced in Brazil, and that's why environmental leaders, indigenous leaders, government leaders throughout the world, and environmental organizations, environmental and human rights organizations like Amazon Watch believe that the threats to the Brazilian Amazon and its people are one of the biggest crises that we face today. Because opening up the Brazilian Amazon to agribusiness means destroying the Amazon. And if we destroy the Amazon, we lose biodiversity and we lose climate. And that, and that threatens all of us. We recently released this report called Complicity and Destruction. And it is a, re a report exposing the global supply chains and the financial relationships that sustain the corporate attacks on the Amazon. And in it, we expose the agri agribusiness companies, international agribusiness companies like ADM and Bungie and Cargill of the United States, the EU and financiers such as Credit Suisse, Credit Suisse, BNP Paraibas, and also financial asset managers like BlackRock, Vanguard, State Street. Most of us have never heard of them, but these are companies that have shares and investments in the largest, largest publicly traded agribusiness companies operating in the Brazilian Amazon. So we have to put pressure on these asset managers, these financiers, and we've launched a campaign called the Complicity and Destruction Campaign. And we're expanding our efforts on the ground in Brazil, and we need your help. And we need your help because of the recent studies on climate that have come out by the UN, and the recent studies of, by, the, by the UN also the global biodiversity assessment that recently came out just in last month. The UN reports say that 
We have less than 12 years to turn around climate chaos. We have the next 10 years to stop the global extinction crisis from continuing. They warn that a million species could go extinct if we continue business as usual. So we cannot continue business as usual. And we're here because our minds are opened. We're here to respond to what the plants, the sacred master plants have shown us. Opening our minds, opening our consciousness, healing ourselves. And we also need to heal the planet. We need to heal the Amazon. We need to hear, heal, hear the words and the cries of the indigenous people of the Amazon. The Brazilian Amazon, the Western Amazon, the entire Amazon is under threat by extraction, by agribusiness, and greed. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention that there's another threat that is all of us. If we continue to extract the knowledge without giving back, that also is a threat. Our partners in the Peruvian Amazon, the Shipibo, Conibo, Setepo people, are very, very worried about spiritual extractivism, are very, very worried about spiritual tourism. And I know we're, we're that's, we've been, there's many different conversations that have been had here at this conference about this. But I wanted to make sure that I mentioned that they're very concerned about the healers leaving their communities and not being in their communities to heal their own people. They're very concerned about the threats by the governments to regulate ayahuasca without the consent of the indigenous people. The UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, which took more than 30 years to get adopted in the United Nations just 11 years ago, one of the primary principles of the Declaration is the right to free prior and informed consent. And indigenous peoples have the right to be consulted on anything that happens on their territories, and they have the right to consent, which means they have to say yes or no. And they have the right to say no. And so as we move forward in healing ourselves, I invite you to also join us in the work to heal and protect the Amazon and also hear the calls of the indigenous people throughout the Amazon and the Shipibo people, Conibo and Satepo people who are calling on us to also be responsible as we extract ayahuasca also from the region. This is a, res a great responsibility. I consider it a huge responsibility to do this work and stand with indigenous people. I consider it a huge responsibility to share this information with you and take action to hold these corporations and these governments accountable. And Amazon Watch cannot do it alone, and the indigenous people cannot do it alone. The indigenous people have been protecting and defending the Amazon since colonization for over 500 years. And it's not solely their responsibility, it's our responsibility as well. So I invite you, all of you, the members of the global ayahuasca community, to join in our work to protect the Amazon, to defend indigenous rights, to defend indigenous territories, which are the best protected areas of the Amazon. Together in unity, just like the plants and the trees have to work together as an ecosystem, we all have to work together as an ecosystem to protect the Amazon and Mother Earth. So, Please join us. I hope you will pledge to join us and support us and join in this great, great responsibility to not allow climate change 
to take over us, but for us to change so that we could protect the climate and biodiversity and Mother Earth. Thank you.